love a good story. Man, how many of you love a good story? Um, how many of you like a good parable, too? I decided to write one myself. <laughs> no, it's not a funny one. It really isn't. <laughs> Usually I realize that I always kind of start off with a few terrible jokes, but I don't have one of those this morning. Three scientists were separately working on a cure for pancreatic cancer. The first scientist had pancreatic cancer himself, and so he was motivated to find a cure. Third, the second scientist, his wife had pancreatic cancer. And so he was motivated to find a cure. The third scientist working separately in a, in, a, in a time of prayer felt like God said that he should work on finding a cure, so he was motivated. Now the first scientist was able to find a cure, and so he gave it to himself. And then he sold everything that he had, and he moved to an island in Fiji where he lived a long and prosperous life. The second scientist also found the cure. And so he gave the cure to his wife. She was cured. And they sold everything that they had, and they moved to Fiji, where they lived a long and prosperous life together. And the third scientist, he sold everything that he had in order to be able to fund his work on the operation and he eventually found a cure and so he published it in every journal that he could find and he sold it for 10 bucks and then he died of a heart attack who succeeded I just made it up it wasn't a great story Come to think of it. But I think it really is a great story. In fact, I think it's an incredible story. In fact, if you tell an incredible story about money, you're really sharing an incomparable, incomparable. Incomparable, incomparable? No? <laughs> We're wrapping up our, our current series right now about how healthy things grow. Uh, we've been continuing this long chew into Matthew, but we're wrapping up this small section. Uh, we'll continue with it in the days ahead. We're going to be starting a, a new series in two weeks' time uh, all about going on a kingdom adventure. Uh, it's going to be a, a long series. Don't miss out on it. It's going to be really cool. Um, but we've been talking about a few things about, you know, the, through the lens of plants, how healthy things grow and healthy things multiply. In the first week, we looked at the idea of getting to the roots of what it is that's going on in our lives and making sure that there isn't anything in there that might be poisoning the roots because... Everything starts from a healthy root. And a healthy root means a healthy plant. Um, so we've got to make sure that we get Jesus into the roots and anything that needs to be dealt with is dealt with. And then we looked at last week at the parable of the weeds, where we talked about making sure that the responsibility is on us to be focusing on ourselves and our faith. It, sometimes we are called to be healthy plants in amongst unhealthy plants. And the focus is us, not the unhealthy plants around us. And uh, so we've covered roots, we've covered weeds, today we're going to cover seeds. Um, I love the story of the mustard seed and the yeast. It, it totally communicates this very important truth. Small changes can do big things in our lives. Anybody seen this to be true in their own life? Small things, small changes can do big things in our life. Did you know that, that saving $10 a day 
over basically a year's worth, or sorry, saving $10 a day, every day, for a length of a typical career. So from when you're 20 until you're 65. If you saved just 10 bucks a day, you'd have $1.6 million at retirement. How many of you wish you started that earlier? <laughs> Get started now. Did you know that if you read just 10 minutes a day, every day, you could read the entire Bible in one year? 10 minutes a day. Did you know that smiling 10 times a day has shown to prevent hair loss? Okay, I just made that up. I couldn't think of another 10, and I was on the theme of 10s, and so I just kind of went with another one, and I just totally made it up. It's a lie. But some of you should smile 10 times a day more, because it's getting a little light up there. In Matthew 13, Jesus told a couple of parables. Uh, we've been going over them as a whole, but he, he, he told this specific, these two parables here, I think to illustrate this truth. And the, the first parable of the mustard seed, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took, and he planted it in a field. And though it's the smallest of all your seeds, yet it, when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. It's interesting where he says the smallest of our seeds, and some of you are going, no, it's not the gar I'm a gardener. I know it's not the smallest of seeds. It was an idiom that Jesus used back then, like saying you're richer than the Taj Mahal, which was a thing that my mom said growing up, which I have no idea even know what it is that it means anymore. And it says it's the largest gar garden plants, and it becomes a tree. And there are different varieties of mustard seed, and some of us think of the mustard plant that grows mustard. Uh, but there's different variants called, uh, w one specifically called a mustard, uh, a, a, a mustard bush. Um, but it actually grows to be about 20 feet. They're massive. They're all over the Middle East. Anyways, but Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to a mustard seed. And the kingdom of God, we know, at that time was very small, but since then has grown into something truly massive, expanded into something quite extraordinary. But I think there is so much more to cover inside of this parable, and in the very little time, 17 minutes that I have today to cover this, uh, we're going to try to whip through some of the truths unlocked in this thing. Jesus compared the, the, the kingdom to a mustard seed another time in Matthew 17, which we haven't come to yet, but where he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can do dynamic things. You can accomplish the miraculous. Both stories teach the same principle. God can do a lot with a little. God can do a lot with a little. Now, there are many of you here today who have spent your entire life struggling with poverty of one sort or another. And I'm not just merely talking about money. I'm referring, referring to any of the other types of poverty, any other types of lack in your life. For example, some people want to have a, a fulfilling and meaningful career and a job that they love doing. They get up and they get excited to go to. They're going to make a difference in people's lives. And for some of you, you just can't seem to get that off the ground. Some of you, you want to have a better marriage and, and, and you're hoping that your relationship with your spouse would someday be something where you find mutual intimacy and fulfillment and you feel like a team and you feel like you're finishing each other's sentence and it's a beautiful, wonderful thing, but you're in this perpetual state of taking one step forward and two steps back. Some of you want to have a dynamic relationship with God. You want to grow in your holiness and your obedience you want your prayer life to be something that is fruitful and dynamic and you're hearing from God and you're doing things and you got seed stories coming out the wazoo. But you just kind of feel like it's not quite there. It seems like year after year you're just kind of spinning your wheels and your good intentions are not really getting you anywhere. This is not what God wants for your life. 
The key to creating change, the key to experiencing an abundant life of God can be found, I believe, in this parable. Um, the smallest decision can make a big difference in your life. There are some supplemental truths, and there, there are some really deeper teachings inside of this that I just don't have time to go into today. If ever you want to hear the full story of this combined with the story of Daniel, uh, come and talk to me. Um, but the key to creating change, the key to an experiencing the, bun- the abundant life of God can be found here. But it starts with asking the question, do you actually want to change? Do you? Do you really want to change? Do you want to experience God's abundance? Because if you just keep doing what it is that you've always done, you'll be exactly where it is that you are tomorrow and the next day. Experience, experiencing God's abundance begins with a decision to act. That's what it starts with. You have to be willing to choose. Am I willing to act? For the farmer, it began with a decision to actually take a seed and go out to his field and plant it. Probably the smartest decision that he could make, right? Big, most important decision in the process for all of us as well is are you willing to make a decision and actually act? If you're lacking the fullness of God's blessing in your life, it's because there is a decision that has yet to be made. Maybe you need to decide to begin reading your Bible every day. Maybe that's something that God has put on your heart. Maybe some of you in here, you're at a place where you need to repent from something, meaning turn away from something that you have been doing for a long time that you just need to leave behind. Maybe you need to change directions and go a different way. Maybe, maybe you need to decide on a new career path. Uh, maybe some of you in here, you need to look at your budgeting and your generosity. Maybe somebody in here needs to make a decision to stick with the decision that you already made but didn't actually do anything about. Anybody in here with a decision that they made at one time that they didn't actually do anything about? Come on, own it. Beauty. That's what it starts with. A decision, but not just a decision, a decision to act. Yeah? You got to decide, are you going to act? If not, you can leave now. You're going to be bored for about the next 12 minutes. If you are ready to act, to make a decision and act on it, then stick with us here. The key to eliminating lack begins with taking the first step. You go into a field and you plant a seed. Think for a moment of all of the seemingly small decisions that you made years ago for a second. Just a really tiny decision that had big consequences. Pause for a moment. Ask God to bring a decision that you made years ago to your mind. Through stage four cancer that I had and then got a miraculous healing through parenting challenges early on. (laughs) Through job changes. Through so many different things that Satan had planned for us. But there was either a deep taproot of hearing from the Holy Spirit, or there was a a, a pot full of other believers around me who were encouraging me during that time and praying for me, who would give me a, a verse at just the right time. And just because of the faith the size of a mustard seed that I had, and sometimes still have, it was enough. God can do a lot with a little. You know, we hope to raise $75,000 this week. (laughs) Yeah, $75,000 this week uh, because we are sending a group of people to Uganda. We are sending this church to Uganda to deliver hope to people who have none, to deliver healing to people who are sick, to deliver homes to people to children on the streets of Uganda who do not have a place to go. Um, We can do a lot of good with $75,000. Did did, did you know that if 200 people, we have about 400 people who attend the church, but if only 200 people gave $375, 
that's $75,000. Sorry, did I say that right? If, you, if 200 people give $375, then we have, no. Yeah? I'm making it? I, I am. <laughs> Should I tell you the gross part of why it is that I'm out of it? No, says Jody. All right, ask me later. Anyways, 200 people, $375. We could raise $75,000 this week. A lot of good in Uganda could be done with $75,000. You guys, three years ago, we raised $35,000, and we built a church in Uganda the size of this room, where that, actually, that church has now planted three churches in the last three years. They've seen hundreds of people come to faith. And we're going to go there, and we're going to commemorize it, and it's going to be fantastic. But imagine what we could do with just $75,000 there, the good that we could do. Um, uh, if we would get to a place where we're willing to invest in the kingdom. Now, now, some of you, God has blessed you, but you're struggling right now financially, and so you're not even sure if you could come up with 375 bucks towards this. But if you prayed, I know that God would tell you you are supposed to give something. Would you just be faithful with that giving of something? And others of you, God is blessed, and you are beginning being called to give much, much more. Some of you in here are called to give radically, like supernatural generosity. So here are some ways to give over the next week in order of my preference. <laughs> but you need to go to God on it. Is that fair? Yeah. Can I be frank? This is my order of preference. My hope is that, first of all, you would pray. And my first idea would be that you just give an offering to God. The number that he places on your heart that is a sacrificial offering to just love him and love the people of Uganda. 100% of that is tax receivable. And if you e-transfer us, if you e-transfer us, then 100% of that goes to Uganda. Because if you use the debit machine or credit card machine, they take like 4%. But we know that God can do a lot with a little. And that little bit that might get taken away could do something really great there. My recommendation? Give a, by e-transfer. Or cash or check. We take cash. Um, second preference if you've already done that other one or you feel like you're not supposed to give to a mission objective we have some very specific objectives that we want to do there if you give to a mission objective it's also 100% tax receivable we have a 6,000 person outreach to a Muslim university. We are doing it up big. We are getting like a big stage. We're bringing in bands from over, all over Uganda um, to reach what we are believing are 6,000 students at this university. We have two 1,000 person youth, youth conferences that we are putting on while we are there. Uh, we have a medical outreach to Kakianga Island, which is going to cost us about three grand. You could give towards that. We have a street kid feeding program where we feed kids on the streets of Kampala because that's how it is that we get to know the ones that are being abused or we know the ones who are orphans or we find out the ones who are being uh, trafficked in some way, shape, or form and we invest in them over a long period of time and then try to convince them that there is something better for them by joining a family. You could sponsor and, 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 and allow a child to get into a home for a year. It costs us about 1400 bucks a year. You could send a, school, a kid to school for a year. Just 275 bucks. Uganda is all private schooling. If they don't have the money, they don't go to school. That's my secondary preference. Third. Next week, buy a pie <laughs> for an exorbitant amount of money. A pie that is priceless. 
tax receipt for the full amount of the bid, less $10 to cover the cost of the pie plate and a few ingredients and keep the government happy. Also, you win huge bragging rights, which is not a Christian thing at all. <laughs> but you know you want to, so you can repent of it after. <laughs> and you get a yummy belly full of deliciousness as well. And then number four, the silent auction, which is now currently online. We have over 53 different lots. I think I put 38, but that's not true. Uh, we have 53, and they're not all up there yet. Um, where we are, we have over $10,000 worth of fantastic items. Uh, no tax receipt is offered for these. Why? Because legally you're getting something for it, so we can't receipt you on it. Um, and you could bid on these things, which would be really cool. And you could also share it with all of your friends who don't go to church and get their money so that we can do some cool things in Africa. Um, if you break out your smartphone, there's the QR code. The auction is currently live. You can start upbidding the items right now. Also, please let them know um, this, uh, we have enabled popcorn bidding as well, so if you try to do the last minute snipe, it's gonna bite you right in the butt. Decide what it is that you wanna pay for it ahead of time, and then bid a proxy bid. You can bid proxy bids and tell them what your highest bid is, and if somebody bids that, it'll upbid it until you get to the highest price that you're willing to give. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, just steer clear of anything that Frank777 has bidded for. You don't want that. Okay? <laughs> um, we're going to have a lot of fun. And I also believe that God is going to do something really cool so that God can do something even cooler. Um, Pavel, did we download that movie and do we have it ready? Um, do you, uh, let's, can I have two more minutes? I'm not asking, where is he? I'm not, I'm not asking you this time. <laughs> can I, can, would somebody give me two more minutes to show a quick video? Uh, here is a time-released video of a, a bunch of mustard seeds growing. I felt like we were supposed to look at it. Cool? Okay. Go. At some point... You have to recognize that what it is that you have is just not for your group. And you need to up and move and give yourself to something else. <laughs> 